Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to 10,000 and Below. This is a series where we take a look at the games that are ranked quite low on Board Game Geek. The biggest depository of board games in the world, uh, or at least of their ratings. So we're pretty low at this point in time. We're starting at 15,601. So we're just going to jump right into it. This But this first one here actually has 650 ratings. That's Funny Bunny. Um, so Funny Bunny itself here is be the first bunny to reach the carrot while avoiding the dangerous holes. <laughs> uh, looks like a kid's game. Oh, I see, I see. And it looks like a, a game where the holes can drop and the bunnies fall through. Okay. I think I've seen a mouse version of this game. Eh, Repo in a minute by Mini Funny Bunny. So, yeah, this one is not necessarily a bad game for sure. It's just a kid's game, and people tend to rate kid's games lower. All right, let's continue here. Battle Cards World Conflict. This came out in 2003. Crafty Badger, it's another kid's game, but not one that I gave a lot to. And Slide 5, all right. Battle Cards World Conflict. Uh, yeah, I've played this game, I think. Um, or at least I've seen it. No, I played this, or at least I played a version of it. Maybe I played one of the other battle cards. Uh, there's attack and defense and different things. Or maybe I watched some people play it. Yeah, you can definitely tell that it is not a great... Let's let's do a search here for all different battle cards. Yeah, okay, I played the Western European campaign one, and I gave that one a 5 out of 10. Uh, that one is ranked even lower. We'll get to that one later. But the Pacific Theater is ranked 2,000 spots higher. <laughs> it's a bad graphic design, unfortunately. And you're just building up these cards in front of you, and then you will fight with groups of cards against another person. It's an interesting idea. I just remember it not working well. Crafty Badger, you're packing stuff into a trunk, and you roll dice, and then you can put that in there. It's just too mundane for me. I mean, even for kids' games, these are nice. These little metal cases, they're great. They've been used in other games before, and here you're rolling dice to put the stuff in, but it's just too lucky, really. Slide five. You are sliding chips into a slotted game board. Get five in a row wins. Okay, so this is like connect four, except you can push people out either way. I do like that board. That's a cool looking board. I want to play it just based on how that looks. Huh. Then when they get to the bottom, they roll out, I guess. I definitely would play this at least once. I wonder why it's ranked so low. Uh, well, that game looks interesting. Pulse. Are you a robot? Batman Road Trip? And let's see here. Foil. Foil looks like it is a 3M game. All right. This is... Players try to empty their hands, but they can't play a card number that's a factor or multiple of the number on the card previously played. Huh. So if I play a 2, I can't play a 4 on top of that. But I could play a 9 on top of it. Then these all have different arrows that mean different things. Okay. Oh, it's a pinball background. I love pinball, but those cards are busy as all get out. Are you a robot? This is a social deduction micro game. I've actually wanted to play this one, and I got a copy of it at a convention, and then for whatever reason, it just never made it back to the studio. I guess it got packed in a box, or who knows what. Um, I still do want to try this one at some point, just because it's just a small little game. Batman Road Trip, this is from 2014. You're traveling through Gotham City, trying to collect information on the got on the plans. Why is it called Road Trip? That's a terrible name for a game. 
There's like almost no information about it. Oh, ripped off spit on Monopoly? Monopoly? Ah, ah, ah. All right, foil. Foil from 1968, and yes, it is a 3M game. They have a very distinctive look on the cover here. You're drawing discarding words and cards until you can make a word with the cards in your hand. Ooh, looks very classy. Yeah, this doesn't look like my style game at all, but I can see those aren't bad components, actually, the little plastic trays. Cool. All right, let's continue going through this list here. Um, rub out. Um, pick your poison. We'll take a look at that. Party Scrabble. Yeah, those two words don't go together. Mermaid Beach and Bad Beats. Rub out. Yep, a mafia style game. Boy, that cover is a busy cover. It's Joe's Spaghetti House, which I want to go to right now. I just feel like going to a place like that. Um, yeah, an old roll and move style game. Arnold the Brain Rothstein. Vincent Mad Dog. <laughs> I just, it's funny, like, the names are just very, you know, Charles Lucky Luciano. And it's just some guy there. It, it doesn't, they don't like have this, they have these cool names, but the pictures don't match it. Pick Your Poison. It's a web published game. You're trying to poison your neighbors. No, all right, this came out in 2016. Mermaid Beach. This is a kid's game. It's created by eight year olds. It's like a take that version of Go Fish, but with really, really, really cool cards. I do remember that, the neat little cards and good artwork. Bad Beats. This is from. Stoneblade Entertainment from Justin Gary, and this is a game where you're bluffing, trying to get rid of your vegetables and get dessert, feed the dog and stuff. It's for kids, so if you take a look at this game through those colored glasses, it works out fine. I wouldn't want to play this with other adults, it's just too simple for me, but a nice little family game. Killer Bunnies and the Quest for the Magic Carrot Remix. A dog's life is this low. Interesting. We'll talk about that one in just a second. Discover India. Here's a 1984 Animal Farm. And Hero Card Galaxy. All right. Killer Bunnies in the quest for the magic carrot. You love it or don't like it. Oh, so this is just a bunch mixed together from all the different sets. Killer Bunnies in the quest for magical carrot is a very divisive game in which you to take that game. You play cards, you collect these carrots at the end of the game, a carrot's drawn. If you have that carrot, you win. So you want as many carrots as possible for a better chance. This game is probably objectively a badly designed game, and I still enjoy it to some degree. I can't give a good reason why. A Dog's Life. This is one of the first Euro-style games that I played from Christopher Boldinger, actually. And... They just reprinted a few years ago, but the fact is, is the game is not very good. I like the concept of the game. You're going to run around as a dog. You are marking your territory so that other dogs won't go in it. You are picking up bones and delivering them, or picking up newspapers and delivering them and getting bones. And It's very doggy, right? But unfortunately, it's super, super lucky. I mean, look at those cool-looking dogs. They're cute. Who wouldn't like them? The great cover. But at the end of the day, the game itself isn't very good. Discover India. This is from Queen Games. Designed by Gunter Cornett, who uh, has done Hey, That's My Fish and Kahuna and The Bottle. Some, some great games. This one is obviously not in there. You're going to be a tour group going through India. Yeah, well... It just doesn't look very interesting, right? And it, not a, wow, it came out a decade ago, not a lot. A set collection game. Wow, very much a straight six-rated game. See all those sixes it's got over here? Oh, well, there you go. Animal Farm, 1984. It's from the folks who made Alcatraz the Scapegoat, which I've played, actually. Who made this game? The publisher, Kuznir, I don't know them at all. I heard nothing about this game. That looks like they had a small booth at Essen there. 
And then that looks like the majority of the pictures are people playing the game at Essen. Where's the actual game? There we go. Maybe. You know, I really am surprised there's not more games based on an animal farm. Um, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. Yeah, there's just not a lot of talk about it. Hero Card Galaxy. I feel like this is the fourth time I've talked about this, which I have talked about it. From Table Star Games, there was four games they made that worked together. And you could take it, each game was different, but you could take a deck from one game and work in the other. So there's superheroes, samurai, horror, and here, space. I remember thinking the game for this one was okay. But, you know, this whole working together thing, it didn't make any sense thematically. And it wasn't as exciting as you might think. But it was a noble effort, so I'll give them that. All right, let's see. Broomsticks and Backflips. That's just a funny name, so we'll take a look at that. Coming down here to Chip Chip Hurrah. Wow, it's ranked a lot lower than I thought it might be. And Just for Fun Colors and Disney Magic Kingdom game. All right, Broomsticks and Backflips. It's a kid's game from Pegasus Spiel. It's a wizard race. You're walking up the stairs. I like that wooden broom there. I like that name. So Player Entertainment did this. I never saw it. I assume that this is a decent game because it's a kid's game and it's probably fun for them. Chip Chip Hurrah is designed by Claus Toiber. He is the designer of Settlers of Catan. But this is not Settlers of Catan. In this game, you are... Uh, let's see if we can find a picture of it. These are the robots in the game. Well, anyway, oh, there it is. You can see it in the background there, right here by the uh, uh, person's hand. There's a little catapult, and you put these discs, which wouldn't make any sense now because uh, for kids playing the game, well, it's a floppy disk. And then you catapult these discs onto the board. You then move your robots next to it. These robots have a die under them, and as you move them across the board, these robots, that die hits these edges and flips around, and then you reveal, and whoever has the highest die next to it wins it, and then you put a chip in that person's back. You can see the chips in the back here of the robot. It's dexterity mixed with dice randomness. It's probably not a very good game. I've enjoyed playing it, though. I've... Uh, over the years, I remember my first guy was like, oh, a Claude's Toy Bird game. And it works well for kids, but um, it's just more silly than not. Just for fun colors. Very, very, very generic looking. Just for generic. All right, well, what do you think it is here? Four in a row? Yep. All right, a four in a row style game. Disney Magic Kingdom game. Race your fellow park goers around. This came out in 2004. And it is straight up. Looks like a roll and move. Looks like a game that you buy at the Magic Kingdom. Like you haven't spent enough money there already. It's decent packaging. And that's some nice pieces there. I can see why people buy this though. It sure looks pretty. Alrighty, let's continue on here on the list. Port Arthur, the Russo-Japanese War. That has 99 rankings. Uh, let's see what else catches my eye. Junior Stratego. How's that different than Stratego? Then we got Pakong, the Witcher Adventure Card Game, and Flea Market. All right, so this is... Simulation of the ground campaign of the Russo-Japanese War of 1904 to 1905. Another one from a magazine. These are nice pictures that explain exactly what's going on. Very, very, very basic, though. You can just see the numbers on the tanks. This came out when? 1992, so 28 years old. Junior Stratego. It uses a die to decide combat rather than a value symbol. Oh, that sounds terrible. The whole point of Stratego. Do you at least get to do you at least get to Interesting. You're gonna move around and then attack each other and then roll a die. 
Nope. Bakong here. This one has a lot of ratings. 201 comments. 533 ratings. You're hunting down stuff in a Cambodian primeval forest. This was recommended for the Spiel de Spiel for families in 2009. It came from Asthma Day. I don't believe I've ever seen this game. Looks like you're following a trail. This looks like that's life, actually. I don't think it is. Huh. This one looks like it never came out in English. Weird. The Witcher Adventure Card Game from 2007. A lot of games have been made about The Witcher. This one is not getting a lot of love. Oh, it's based on the novel, sorry. Looks like a CCG, right? Looks like typical CCG. Locations. The different characters. Toss a coin to the Witcher. Oh, Valley. Flea Market. Flea Market is not that great of a game, unfortunately. Leo Calavini is not one of my favorite designers. And Mayfair Games, and this is their Funfair line, which almost, it was their Simple Games line, and just really bad quality components, unfortunately. Um, that combined with this trading goods for other goods, I, I'm having a hard time even remember how the game played. But I remember not liking it. Find items, sell them cheaply. First person get $45. That's right, you roll 3d6 and that item goes up for auction, and then you roll 2d6 and you reveal your dice and you get an option to buy it. Yeah, it wasn't that good of a game, unfortunately. Mind Maze sounds cool. From 1970, G-O-O-T-M-U, Hawk and Freaky! All right, let's take a look at Mind Maze first. You build a maze for each other in sight unseen, then you race each other. You use a magnetic controller to move your steel ball when you hit a baffle, and it drops at a bomb where you have to grab it anew. That sounds really fun, like one or two times. I like the concept of it. You know, you got to move and get it through and knock things over, and you're trying to build a maze that messes the other person up. That's an interesting concept, but it sounds like it also would run dry pretty quickly. I would definitely play this. This sounds interesting. G-O-O-T-M-U. What does that stand for? Get out of the maze unit. Oh, well, there you go. This is from Jolly Games. designed by Tom Jolly. Really, really bad components here. This is definitely like a self-produced one trying to get out of a maze. I wonder why it's get out of the maze unit. Let's see what people said about this, because obviously it's a quick game. It only works with two players. It's chaos. Okay, I can see he also did Wiz War, and this is similar to Wiz War, like a Kmart version of Robo Rally. All righty, Hawk Stapler. My house, my yacht, my car, it used to be enough to make an impression, but now you need more... Is someone a fraud or not? Oh, those cards don't match that or not. It's from Reiner Kinesia. Man, and Reiner Kinesia has like the biggest spread of games in the top 100 games and all the way down here. And this was re-implemented by Icarus from Victory Point Games. Interesting. Huh. A slightly higher rank here. Icarus. Not Icarus. Icarus. All right. Freaky. Another Leo Calavini game. Uh, you start with three cards and you play them. You play one to three. You have to match a character so the card is being played. Okay. Sounds very generic. Doesn't sound freaky at all. <laughs> all righty. Let's continue down here. Lego Time Cruisers game. Bubble Jungle. Frenetic, which I have played. And Torches and Pitchforks. Well, let's just go to the end here. We're almost there. NFL Game Day, Crash Pilot. And we always look at the last one. I'm probably going to regret that. All right, Lego Time Cruisers. This is from Lego. This is before they made all those special board games. This is way back in the day. 
this is more of a roll and move, and you have these different Lego minifigures, I guess, going through different periods of time. This looks like one giant advertisement for Lego itself. Bubble Jungle, which I gave a 6 to. Oh, uh, yeah, you have these, these elephant guns here uh, that pick up the balls. Um, you got to, like, press it down on the ball to pick it up. And you're just picking up different colors. That, that's fine. It's for kids. Frenetic. This is a game that uses the periodic table as a word game, which sounds pretty bad, but I played it, and I actually enjoyed it and had a good time. And you get points based on where they are in the periodic chart. And, uh, again, this is a game that should not work, but I thought it did as a party game. Torches and Pitchforks, this is from Green Ronin Publishing. I remember seeing this one for a while, a monster hunt game. I want to say this is kind of like a take that game, maybe? You'll put your eye out. NFL Game Day. Um, oh, I do remember this one. Here's what I like about NFL Game Day. At the end of the board, and you can see them here on the bottom, are all these magnetic strips with actual football teams on them. You can take them out. And they fit perfectly in many other games, uh, like the dice football game from uh, Stephen Glenn and r, r has to use like generic names. I stuck these in my version, so I have upgraded names. Other than that, you just play some cards and see who, who wins. It's, it's, it's okay. Crash Pilot, another children's game. You're matching shapes and colors. Don't know what that has to do with being a pilot. I guess it wasn't always called Crash Pilot. And then finally, Sexy, the game of flirting. The game of the art of flirting. Um, all right. <sighs> well, it looks like it's only in Spanish, so I'll never know how good of a game I'm missing out on here. All righty. Well, that is another 100 games. Uh, in the 10,000 and below series. Are there games I should have talked about here or the games you want people to know about? Mention them in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching 10,000 and below on the Dice Tower.